There we go. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, let's get officially started. My name is Joe Rogers. I am the new college counselor at School of the Nations. Um, I'm lucky to have worked with Natalia over the past few years, um, over working through personal statements, recommendation letters, the SAT preparation. I've been working with Masya for the AP program. Um, and so I'm really excited to, to start in this new position. Um, and I've already met with a lot of students, a lot of parents. Um, if we haven't met yet, I look forward to that opportunity and we'll talk about how to schedule a meeting with me so that we can address some of your individual concerns a little bit more personally then as well. To begin, I wanted to talk about, and I hope this presentation part, I, I wanna make it relatively quick uh, because I wanna leave a lot of time for questions and answers and concerns. All right, but I did wanna show some of the resources that, we that we've created at the school over the past few years. And I wanna talk about the plan that I have for this year going forward, right? What supports do we offer our students in order to get them into university? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen now. And this is a website that Natalia had been working on for the past few years when she, uh, when she was working as our college counselor. Is everyone able to see my screen? If you could give me like a verbal yes. Yes. Great, thank you. Yes. All right, so and I'll put this, I'll put this link into the chat as well for those who are just joining us. For those who are already here this morning a little bit early, um, you might already have access to this. Um, but this is a really helpful resource bank that Natalia spent a few years creating, and I think it's a great resource for parents and for students. I mean, so if you open up in the website, all of these hyperlinks still exist. Um, and I think that, for example, I am a parent, right? And she created some resources specific to parents um, that might be really beneficial, right? And so she discusses what role the parent plays in the college application process, the sense of community, right? The fact that it's not just any individual person. This is not, the student is not on this journey alone. Uh, the parents are not alone in sending their child to university, but we as a school community also offer a sense of support for these students, right? It should be a holistic experience. We want to make sure that students are able to realize their dreams, right? And whether that means staying in Brazil and, and studying medicine or going abroad and studying business, whatever that might be, we want to make those possible. And each of us have a different role to play in that. And so, and she also discusses a few of the, the basic ideas of financial aid. Right, and so I think that there's, if you wanna navigate some of these resources, I would like to study in Brazil as from, from the student perspective. Then there's a lot of videos that she made about recommendations at each grade level, what we should accomplish. And this is something I'll talk about later on in the presentation as well. I just wanna make sure that these resources, you know that they exist and you know where to find them so that we can explore a little bit more later, right, on your own. I know that one hour is not enough time to discuss everything that is possible, all of the individual plans, and all of the resources that we offer. But this is, good, this is a good starting place and a good resource um, for parents and students to explore who are interested in, in getting more involved in this university process. Now I want to switch over and I want to discuss some of the activities that we have that I have planned for Homeroom. This is something that is new this year. Um, we had Homeroom, of course, last year. And last year we ran a series of college weeks. Typically uh, uh, we have universities coming every month um, and we try and aim for five universities from all around the world, uh, Brazil, Italy, France, uh, Canada, the UK, coming in and talking to our students and the students have a chance to interact with the representatives, ask questions about the university. They're able to see universities they might not have known have existed beforehand. But what we're also gonna be using this year in homeroom is I'm creating a scaffolded list of activities and events that work through grade nine, 10, 11, and 12, so that by the time a student graduates in, in grade 12, we've gone on several steps of this journey together so that when they're applying to universities, they feel very prepared, right? And that's, and that's open to students who are interested in studying nationally, students who are interested in studying internationally. If there's any questions at any point, please feel free to stop me and speak up. I can't see the meet right now, um, but if you just shout my name, then I'll, I'll stop the presentation and respond to the best of my ability. So I do want to start with different grade levels, and I'm going to jump back into the meet really quick. And I get a sense of who is here and what grade levels we have, what, what parents we have and students in which, in 
respective grade levels? Do we have ninth grade parents, 10th grade parents, 11th grade parents, 12th grade parents? Hello, uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade. All right, so then what I think the best approach is, because I think we have a lot of parents from a lot of different grade levels, let's start from ninth grade because your ninth grader will soon be a 10th grader, 11th grader, and 12th grader. So it's important to show all of, all of the steps along the way. All right, so I'm gonna jump back into the presentation mode and I'll talk about some of the events. All of these events will happen in our homeroom period, right? So we have 30 minutes um, every single day, Monday through Friday, in which students meet with individual teachers, they build a bond. Um, we also have, we hired a company practice that it comes in and, and talks to students every month about social emotional issues. Um, and part of another activity that we're gonna be introducing and I'll be introducing this year, are scaffolded opportunities for students who are interested in going to university, right? And, and how to go through that process. So I'll start with ninth grade. In quarter one, ninth grade is going to meet with Praxis, and Praxis will talk about college and career counseling. So this idea of looking through different professions, trying to find out what the ninth graders' individual skills are, their personality traits are, and different professions that might fit their profile. And so for quarter one, Praxis really takes that first week with them. And I don't meet, meet with grade nine students as much as I do 11, uh, 10, 11, and 12. So for the first quarter, they really do discuss praxis. Um, the second quarter, I talk to the ninth graders. We follow up on praxis's information about their personality inventory, right? And so I analyze those results. We look at the professions they came up, um, and we have a larger conversation with the ninth graders about who they are, what they're interested in, and what professions they can consider. And so that event happens in the second quarter for that week long. In the third quarter, I meet with the ninth graders again. And we, because we started talking about professions first, right, and personality first, profession second, and then we also talk about study plans, right? And so if you have a few goals for your professions, what are different types of degrees? What are different majors or minors that you might want to study and pursue in order to make those, those careers possible? And we talk about the differences between a bachelor's of arts versus a bachelor's of science. How do you get a double major? What is a minor? Right. And some of those questions are very much so on their minds. And so we'll meet with them in the third quarter and discuss some of those as well. In the fourth quarter, we meet again for a week. And I talk about the AP Capstone Diploma Program. And because we are an AP school, we offer three different diplomas to our students, the national, international, and the AP Capstone Diploma. And so these AP Capstone classes are university level classes made available to ninth through 12th graders. And we sit down and I talk about what that Capstone Diploma program is and what, pro, what classes we offer, when we offer those classes. And then I sit down with those students individually and we start making a plan for ourselves, right? When are we going, what classes might interest you according to your major, according to your profession, right? So already you can see that there's a step-by-step -step process about how that unfolds. We start with the bigger picture in terms of our long-term goals. Then we talk about study plans, and then we talk about what we can do in high school to make those study plans possible, right? And so that's, my, that's generally the trajectory for the ninth graders. Are there any questions about ninth grade uh, before, I, before I move on to 10th? Okay, so for 10th grade, we do wanna be a little bit flexible and we wanna offer different opportunities for students, recognizing that there's a need to address students who are primarily focused in studying in Brazil and students who are interested in studying abroad. And so in quarter one, and this is all color coded, I'm sorry. So ninth grade is red, 10th grade is blue. Um, so for 10th grade, for this first week in quarter one, students have the choice whether to uh, stay with me and we'll continue talking about the AP, AP Capstone Diploma, courses that are offered. We'll talk about what the SAT is, why you should consider taking the SAT, which is an international standardized test uh, based from the United States, also created by the College Board, which, is, which also creates our AP program. We talk about language proficiency tests. What is the difference between Duolingo versus IELTS versus TOEFL? Um, 
and how to find those resources to study if that's necessary. And then we have a quick question and answer session at the end. Henrik this year will be talking to the students who are interested in studying in Brazil. And so they'll be with either me or Henrik. And he'll be talking about the new ban essay that's been, that was released a, a couple of years ago that School of the Nations is in the process of implementing. Um, then we'll talk about the different, mostly a name, because we do focus as a school on a name. But I think it's important to discuss all of the different vocabulary and terms that students might come across in the university hunt, right? which includes PAS, which includes vestibula. And so those will be mentioned, but most of our focus, our primary focus as a school is on a name. And so we'll talk about some of those terms, what those mean, what those look like in this homeroom period. All of our 10th graders take the PSAT. And what is the PSAT? Well, the PSAT is offered to 9th and 10th graders um, as an earlier assessment that is that sets them up for success towards the SAT. It allows us to get diagnostic information so that we can create individualized study plans for the students. And so I do want to talk about, because all of our students take this test, um, I want to have a couple of moments where we talk about what that reading section looks like, what the writing section is, and what the math section is, and then introduce the SAT study hall that students have the opportunity to attend in order to prepare for that first standardized test of the year. Then in the second quarter, the second and the third quarter, we do a different approach with 10th grade, where I introduce, I have what's called a region overview, right? And students, I offer three different weeks for students to attend. We do expect students to attend at least one of these regional overviews, right? And so for one week, we'll talk about the United States. What are the benefits of studying in the United States? What are the drawbacks? If you're interested in studying in the United States, what does that process look like? How do you find access to resources about financial aid, recommendation letters? How do you find universities that might be your best fit? And then we also do the same thing for Canada and the United Kingdom, right? So we do introduce those different schools, schools that we have relationships with, um, what those application processes look like. And then it's a little bit more of an introduction where you can be exposed to regions and consider regions, studying regions that you might not have, have considered before. The students, of course, are able to attend all three, but we do expect them to attend at least one in the second quarter. In the third quarter, we do the same thing with different regions as well. Um, so I, I put Europe and then I also put in parentheses the Netherlands, and that's, I know that the Netherlands is in Europe, but they do have a very distinct application process. Um, and so it, it's almost like there's a lot of Europe and then we, there is a time to talk specifically about the Netherlands, especially because we have a lot of students over the past couple of years who have shown an increased interest in studying in the Netherlands. Um, and so that, that, that is why that's in parentheses, but we do talk about the overall Europe process. We do the same thing with Australia and New Zealand, and then the same thing with Asia. Again, students do not have to attend all three. Uh, they can, but we expect them to attend at least one, right? So by the end of the third quarter, they will have looked at two different regions that they've expressed interest in studying in, right? And that helps me when they go into 11th grade to get a better sense of, of what their ideas are, what, they, what type of university they're looking for. In the fourth quarter, I meet with them. These are two short weeks, right? So I, I take both of these weeks um, and I sit down with them and we create what's called a long list of universities. And I show them how to organize some of their, organize their process so that we are able to stay on the same page throughout the rest of the process, right? So in this case, we, we divide the schools by region. I want to know the university names, any programs of study, any admission deadlines, a whole long list of universities that they're considering going into 11th grade, right? And regardless of the region, including, we have a lot of students who apply to three or four different regions around the world, right? So this just helps us kind of stay on the same page so that I know how to cater my counseling to best fit your, your students' needs. So that's 10th grade. Any questions about 10th grade before I move on? Joe. Yes. Just, just an observation. Um, the PSAT is for every grade 10 and 11 students. And that, and, and I do, and I'm so sorry, that's a great point. Um, I also want to say right now, I do cater these activities for by grade level, but that does not mean a student in 11th grade cannot go to a grade 10 event, right? All of these activities are open to everybody. Um, the reason why we talk about the PSAT in 10th grade is this is their first time, um, but if, the, if your junior is looking to want a quick review, 
um, then they're also able to attend those 10th grade sessions as well. Not an issue, right? So these, all these activities are open to everybody. It's just showing the scaffold of activities. At, in 10th grade, there's some things that are expected. In 11th grade, there's some things expected. But of course, you can attend multiple sessions that are outside your grade level. So for 11th grade, now that we have a long list that we're, we're developing, what we're going to focus on for juniors are mostly talking about specific universities and how to look at this long list and then shorten it to prioritize the schools that we are really and truly interested in. Right. And then because of that, when students, when we invite student university representatives to come onto campus and talk to our students, I think it's really important for them to learn how to ask specific questions about specific universities. And so I do, uh, we do have a session where we say, looking at this presentation, these are some things that you might want to pay attention to, right? Ask this question. If you know this, this school is a private international school in Europe, right? Then these are questions that you might want to ask that type of representative or look for in this type of university. So that students have a little bit more guidance in terms of sometimes I feel like when college reps come on campus, there's so much vocabulary thrown around that students don't really know what to ask. Right, everything looks good. And so I, I wanna teach them how to dig a little bit deeper into those, those presentations um, so that their questions can really get to their specific needs. And maybe that applies to, they might be looking at a university that they're not even interested in applying to, but the types of questions, if we have a European university, for example, an Australian university, they'll be able to ask questions about the Australian application process, even if they're not interested in that specific school. So I think it's really helpful skills uh, that we set aside time for in this first quarter. Because after that, all of our juniors and our 10, 11th graders are expected to attend our college weeks, right? As, they've, as they create, they work from the long list and then the, we, we, our goal by the end of the year is to have a good short list of universities. Typically from seven to nine universities is what I recommend for most students to have uh, that they're interested in applying to by the time they begin 12th grade. So we have a college week at the end of September um, and then again at the end of October, after October holiday. Um, and then we also have, again, a little bit of an opportunity for students to kind of choose their own adventure. Um, so we have a lot of students, they can either go into this week-long session that is focused on SAT preparation, or they can also have um, a, a little bit more of an intensive experience with past preparation. This is just to introduce some of the key concepts, because I know that Half an hour is not a long time, but we also do provide mock exams for both the SAT and for the PAS. This is just to introduce what those tests are, what those tests look like, what resources we offer, and when and where to find them. All right, so we do have that week as well where students are able to choose which week they would like to attend. But they are expected to attend one. We have another college week at the end of November. Oh, and also something I did want to mention. I try, when I, when I schedule representatives, I try and get the universities, if we have a regional overview of Canada or in United Kingdom, then there's a good chance I'll try and specifically invite some of those universities from Canada and the United Kingdom on this college week for the 11th graders. So that some of the 10th graders who just went through one of these regional overviews might want to go to this college week specifically so that they can talk to some of those representatives from that country that we were just speaking about the week earlier. Right, so that's an open invitation for both juniors and sophomores to get both of those experiences. And then we have another college week. And then at the end of quarter three, what I go into is I start doing what I call region specific counseling. So at this point, we are at the, in the second semester of our junior year, ending third quarter, going into fourth quarter. And so I think at this point, we should have a good sense of what regions we want to apply to. So what I do then is I send out a quick survey to the students, what are the regions that you're interested in, in studying at, looking at your lists, and then what I'll do is I'll form small groups depending on the region. So I might have eight students who are interested in studying in Canada. I sit with them as a small group, and we talk about that process. We start looking at more of those details as a small group, because sometimes I feel like in individual conferences, I'm answering the same questions, and I know more than one student has, it has those same questions. Right, so here's a chance for us to get a little bit more focused attention in a small group um, for those last two weeks of quarter three. We have another college week at the end of April. 
And then we also have a moment in which I, we talk about how to request recommendation letters um, from teachers, counselors, administration, and even peers, right? Because I use peer feedback sometimes when I write a counselor recommendation. And then we also have two workshops in which students choose one, how to write a personal statement, right? And there's two different varied types of personal statements depending on the region you're applying to. Hopefully by 11th grade, we have a good sense, a short list of the universities that we want to study, uh, at which we want to study. We ask for recommendation letters, and then we begin drafting our personal statements so that by the time we begin see our senior year, our 12th grade year, we have all of those resources already available. Any questions about 11th grade before I move on? Okay, now 12th grade, this is when we get very individual, right? We started as a whole class, we started as a whole grade, then we went into smaller groups. And now when you're a senior year, it's really important that we find time to meet individually and one-on-one -on -one to talk about your specific application process, your specific personal statement, right? And, and making sure that your individual application is the strongest that it can be. And so for this first month, I block off the time for the seniors uh, to meet with me and my goal is to meet every single senior during this time in the first month when we come back to school and i think for the most part that's really what our activities are for our seniors you'll see a lot of times blocked off for these individual conferences for them to meet with me individually they're not able they can meet with me in homeroom i also have meeting times outside after school during the school schedule and so there's a lot of opportunities for students to schedule individual conferences with me but for this first semester this is when our students really need that one-on-one -on -one time, and so that's what we focus on. And then what we'll do at the, the last, at the end, right, I think in the third quarter, hopefully we're getting recommend, uh, acceptance letters, hopefully we're getting more prepared, hopefully we're getting some of those um, financial aid offers. And so that last quarter, I think it's really important that we have a college spirit week. It's also my birthday, small shout out to me. Um, but it, for the most part, it is also Time for celebration. The first two weeks of May are typically when we have AP exams. So I didn't want to do it earlier. Um, so I wanted to leave those, those, those times free for our seniors who are finishing those exams. But then after that, I feel like there's a time for celebration, right? And so we do have a college spirit week. Um, we're going to have a capstone graduation ceremony for those students who are graduating with our AP capstone diploma and a lot of different events. Students can wear the sweater um, that, of the university that decided to attend. Uh, we can start having some of those conversations. This is a time just to recognize that this has been a journey, four years working as a whole class, small groups, individual, and this week is a time for seniors to really sit back and say, I've, I've done a good job, right? This is something that I've worked for, and this is, and before we go off into our university, we should celebrate that together as a school community. So that's what this week is for as well. That's the roadmap. Um, for the most part, I do think that that is generally the, the scaffold activities for what students should be doing and by when, and a lot of the resources that we offer as a school. The last thing I did want to send you is my agenda. Um, for any parents who are interested in studying an individual conference with me, I understand that sometimes in a whole class presentation, it's hard to get some of that personalized uh, questions and concerns out of the way. Um, and so if you would like to schedule a meeting with me, I'm gonna repost my link to the calendar here into the chat. I tried, I know that was so much information. I tried to get the bulk of it out of the way as, uh, as quickly as I could, I, but it's 1130, which means that we have about a good half an hour for questions and concerns from parents and from students. We also have Masia here, who is our AP coordinator. So if there's any questions about the AP program or the courses that we offer, we have that as well. Henrik is our teaching and learning coordinator. So anything about competency-based education, transcripts. He also worked as a university counselor for a number of years.
I didn't I didn't want to aid you, Henrik. A number is ambiguous. Let me see this. I also think you know, that the people that can you, right? I'm, I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that? If people have questions, contact you as well, right? Of course. So if you would like to contact me as well, the best place to find me, and I'll put this into the, the, the chat as well, is college.guidance at edn.org.br. Joe, can I, I would just make a comment about the AP program this year. We were able to get 20 AP classes offered this year. So we are uh, one of, uh, out of four schools in Brazil that offer the AP program. And we have the most, the largest number of AP classes being offered. And it's been very nice to see a lot of grade nine students just uh, exploring all of these classes that we're offering after school. So that's, that's a good thing that we're seeing this year. Uh, we've had three new courses added this year and two of them reached the maximum number of students. They're going from one class to the other until August 20th, which is when they need to decide what class they will take. And it's just been very interesting to see their interest and in how in, uh, engaged they are in the program and how much they want to learn from each one of the classes being offered. So this is, this is something very cool that's happening this year. And Masia is an AP teacher as well. She is our AP environmental science teacher. That's right. <laughs> I think Henrik had his hand up. Just, just to uh, piggyback on what you said, Marcy, and emphasize the importance of uh, for all the parents and students here, but all the parents to stress with your kids the relevance of the AP courses for those who are considering applying abroad, but also those who want to go deeper into their level of understanding and knowledge. Um, the AP classes, it's some, something that we hear a lot from parents like, okay, the AP class, what AP classes, what are that, what does that mean, right? So talking about university level classes that actually may give you even credit when you start studying at the university. But it's also great in the college application process, right? So when kids go through the AP classes, universities value that a lot from an academic perspective. So that's that's how important it is that we're offering so many AP classes to our students. That is something to consider taking those classes because it helps them a lot in their application as well abroad, but also for Brazil because it takes their knowledge one step further. Right? So it is, it's really something very relevant that we offer in our school. We just wanted to stress that. You're right. Thanks, Henrik. And Joe, I think if, if there are no questions, if no one wants to ask anything, we can actually close the meeting and then uh, be available to answer questions uh, by email so people can contact you by email and all that. So if no one has any questions, I think that we don't we don't need to sit here till uh, <laughs> till <laughs> noon. Right? Right. So. <laughs> All right, so I have no problem. Again, you have my email. Please make sure that also, if you're interested, schedule a time to meet with me, right? I'm, I'm very interested in meeting uh, with students and with, with parents. So please, please, please find a time to meet. I would love to talk to you. I think, Joe, I think and someone he, he, asked I a see. question. And there he question. says, uh, I think so, right? Right, Masia, students can, can enroll in. And Hika, are you talking about the... I a can't class see that you the have question. not. Oh, I'm so sorry. So he's saying, like, for the student that was doubting about APs, can they still um, can they still sign up this week? 
Yes, they can sign up this week, but they have a shorter period to decide because the deadline for everyone is still August 20th, Friday. Okay, so if he, um, if he wants to try out one of the APs on, on uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, you know, until Thursday or Friday, that's fine. He can just go into any of the APs that he wants to, to attend and try it. But Friday is the deadline to, to make a decision. Joe, can you do me a huge favor? I can't sure. access the chat here. It, can you put my email there just in case anyone has any questions about the APs or any? Of course. Um, any comments? That's not a huge favor. Can we also? Thank you. <laughs> Are other people who are in the chat able to see the messages? Otherwise, I think there might be a lot of information and resources that I put into the chat that I actually didn't send in the way that I wanted to. Um, I don't know about others, but I can see it. You can. Everything oh, is visible cool to me as well. OK. Are there any other questions? Yeah, so I have a question. So for 10th graders, can we, or are, do we have the possibility to go deeper with the profession's job based on our personality? Because I thought that you, you're going to do that with the ninth graders and for people, for students that are new, like myself, I think that right. Yes, you are able, I think I, again, any activity is open to any grade level. You could spend the entire year going to every single college guidance activity, right? I just want to make sure that like that, it's just, I just say ninth grade because I want the ninth, the ninth graders are, are obligated, right? Required to do that, those sessions. Um, but if you also want to come into those sessions as well, you are more than welcome. Before Every time before there's a week of activities, I send out a form, a sign-up form, for all of the students who are interested. So sign up and, and I'll see you there. Not a problem. Well, if there are no more questions, I think we can go. Thank everyone for, we can thank everyone for their participation here. And if there are questions, you have the email addresses. You can also contact the high school section. Um, and thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate taking your time on a Saturday to learn more about college. Anything that I, I, I can help you with, please feel free to reach out and ask. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. See bye you bye, everyone. See ya. Bye bye.